You have now just entered the retrofitted DeLorean DMC-12 from Back to the Future. Please strap in and strap in tight because you are taking a trip back to the late 1940s. Here we go. A lot of people really don't know how video games started. And we aren't really exactly talking about it automatically started with Computer Space that was released in 1971. We are going through games like early programs for the MIT Whirlwind and big warehouse filling computers. You have now just entered the late 1940s. Well, you're probably thinking that how could video games start being developed in the 1940s? That is the exact thing. This is the origin of video games. It all started out with a little thing called a cathode ray tube, aka CRT. A cathode ray tube, and now I will call it a CRT, is a vacuum tube containing an electron gun, which is basically produced colors. Now I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but you can get further information online. Now the CRT was also affiliated with missile defense systems that were based off the CRT. The program created for the MIT Whirlwind computer was Bouncing Ball, which was in 1949 and 1950. The program was created by Charlie Adama, and although it wasn't interactive, it was a precursor to future games. The next development was created in February of 1951, where Christopher Strachey tried to run a checkers program. This was developed for the MPL Pilot Ace, but it exceeded the little memory for the Pilot Ace had. So he went to Manhattan to finish up the job. There, Strachey had a bigger memory computer, and he finished his checkers program in October of 1951. And finally, a game that sounds fun. Do not get me wrong, checkers is fun, but tic-tac-toe is better. In 1952, A.S. Douglas created OXO at the University of Cambridge. OXO was for the EDZAC computer and used the CRT to display the visuals. The first AI came in as the player competed against the EDZAC computer. I'm guessing most of us knowledgeable retro gamers know about Tennis for Two, but if you don't, now is your time to know. We are taking a big six-year jump to 1958, where William Higginbottom created Tennis for Two. Tennis for Two was used to entertain people at the Brookhaven National Library. Geez, I would surely hope there is some kind of entertainment over there. Tennis for Two was created using an oscilloscope and an analog computer. And just in case you were wondering, it is indeed playable with two boxy controllers. Now you have entered the early 1960s, which means we have just gone through two decades of developments, from just watching a bouncing ball to be able to play the earliest version of Pong. Just to go through a little quick information, in 1959 to 1960, some maze games were created for the TX-0 machine at MIT. The two that used the light pen were Mouse in a Maze and Tic-Tac-Toe, which is not a maze game. The third game was H-A-X, Hacks, and I want to explain it like you press switches and it makes cool noises. Welcome to the new millennium of video game programming. Although we didn't jump to the 2000s yet, and we will not in this video, though we can all agree the Dreamcast is awesome. This is 1961, and something magical happened at MIT. A group of students have created a program game called Space War with an exclamation point. Yes, it is that space war for the DCP PDP-1. The game was a two-player game where you shot each other with spaceships armed with missiles. That sounds like a kick-ass time. Space Wars is actually credited with being the first computer game that actually influenced people to play. To end this time-traveling adventure, I only have another two hours with the DeLorean, you know. Our good old buddy, Ralph H. Bear, you know the guy from my Magnavox history video? Create a corn dog. Well, you're probably thinking, what exactly is corn dog? Besides its being a delicious hot dog dipped in batter. This kind of corn dog is the first video game to be displayed on a standard television set, and we had our first step into the home video game consoles. Ready to fire this up? Well, I sure am. Back to the future, where we already passed the golden age of video games. 
got the Genesis, and where video game consoles are already released. Don't give a hint to Ralphie that he is going to be adding a lot bigger things to the video game society. You came in with a small knowledge of the origin of video games and came out with a much larger knowledge. You just got smacked with the facts. Cue the ending.